Again, Jordan. Here we are again. <laughs> hey, Jordan, good to see you again. Uh, we are now at November 2nd, and so uh, we did something special. We decided to get on a train first thing in the morning. Uh, where on earth did we go? Well, we, we left the country. We went down to Brussels. <laughs> we did. We did. And in fact, we've got a, a, a little uh, Brussels video here, and we'll go ahead and uh, play this and just kind of talk a, a little bit about it. There's a little bit of music to it, but we'll uh, we'll tame down the music, uh, and and that'll give us an ability to to talk sort of over that in and speak to it. Uh, some of the things that we saw, I didn't really know that much about Brussels before we jumped on the train. Um, what about you? Not very much either. Uh... I knew about the bollards, which we which will make an appearance later. Okay. Um, I knew about the cobblestone streets, and I knew it was uh, maybe slightly less um, bike friendly city and country than the Netherlands. But yeah, that's pretty much all I, I I had to expect. Yeah, and we'll find out exactly why we went to Brussels later. But uh, yeah, so here here we are. This is literally just after getting uh, off of the, the train at the train station here and uh, diving into the street. We're actually making our way down to the Grand uh, Plaza area. And, and here we are at this. Now, you've been in Europe much more than I have. So these Grand Central Squares, uh, they're, they're really impressive. What did you think of this one? Oh, this, oh, this was grand. I think it was aptly named. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I was a little bit like the the proportions of this one were kind of interesting. Like it felt, um, I don't know, it felt like the buildings were pretty tall for how uh, for the size of the square. I don't know how to describe it other than that. <laughs> well, I think what, I think the point that you had made when we were there was that yeah, compared to the scale of some of the grand uh, squares and the plazas that we had experienced, uh, you know, in the previous days there in the Netherlands, this one just seemed quote unquote grander. I mean, you look at the architecture of the buildings; it's much more ornate. They're just a, they seem a little bit taller, uh, and yeah. So you that was kind of the thing that you had mentioned at the time was that it just it, you were like, wow, this it was almost overwhelming. Yeah, it. I don't know if my impression matches that of anybody else, but just given the height of the buildings, I would have expected the square to be a little bit larger, mm -hmm. or for the size of the square to have the like height of the buildings be somewhat smaller. And so it felt a little bit more, I don't want to say claustrophobic, it just felt like the proportions were a little bit different than some of the other places I've been, like some of the other well-known um, squares in, in Europe, like, uh, like in Madrid, for example. Um, right. But no, it, it was beautiful. You could see it was pretty well preserved. Uh, thankfully, no gigantic billboards with, with ads on them, right. um, which isn't the case <laughs> everywhere in Europe. Um, and the gold, the gold, the sort of like gold leaf going on was a, a nice touch, I thought. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and we we needed coffee, so we actually did uh, hang out there. And then mm -hmm. immediately afterwards, we got to this section, which is just off of from that Grand Plaza area. And I snapped this shot because I just, I found it immediately comforting to see a filtered permeability street in this downtown, old town, historic core area. Thumbs up on that. <laughs> that was very cool to see. Yeah. Too bad they don't let the cars go through there. They'll, they'll figure it out. <laughs> they'll figure they'll... <laughs> it out eventually. Yeah, they'll modernize How dare at they? point. And uh, this is a, yeah, a, a nice little set. Yeah, there's a, a somebody else's Brompton just sort of locked up to the light pole here. And um, and this is actually, I wanted to focus a little bit on these uh, pavers here. Uh, it was wonderful uh, to, to see this sort of historical kind of context to the street. It was nice to have this texture. And these were actually much smoother than the ones that we rode on getting into the, the, the city square. And I think we do comment on that. Um, but yeah, what, what a delightful little space that we sort of yeah. immediately found after our coffee. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, these have these have a little bit more flatter tops to them and were easier to roll over, but yeah. still made it still made it slower going for anybody who wasn't walking basically. Yeah. And look at the scale, I mean, of these streets. I yeah. mean, it's just a, it, it's fantastic. And, yeah. and and of course, we have to, uh, you know, pause and, and, and take a look at this for a second. So this is one of our uh, you know, mechanical you know, quote unquote, automated or automatic uh, bollards. Uh, this individual is is pausing here for just a second to be able to get clearance so that he can, that bollard will lower down and he'll be yeah. able to, to, you know, make his deliveries. And uh, again, what a, what a wonderful thing to see. It's one of the things that I think many cities around the globe could you know to could actually implement a little bit more uh, aggressively is yeah you can still get deliveries you can still uh, get to your home if it's through that area but you do have some of that uh, again here you go filtered permeability but this way in this case the the car is able to get through if they have the magic passcode <laughs> yeah there was so much going on i wish i would have had the presence of mind to take my camera out and film because we saw we saw it in action yeah yeah. Yeah. And that, that, in fact, that it just went down and there that van yeah. goes through. And, uh, and then I come back around just, and I, I, I come and talk to you about this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just in general, the bollards are doing so much All work. Right, here we are in Brussels, Belgium, and just saw some really cool, uh, bollard action here, including a, uh, mechanical bollard. We can see that we've got some early morning deliveries happening here. We've got a bus coming through. Look at the size but of the bus. What I really like about this, Jordan, is these really cool bollards that we have. You're kind of hanging out here by a bollard. You found your friend. Yes. So what do you think so far? After 20 minutes in Brussels? Yeah, yeah, some bollards I think it's action. And, nice. Yeah. A little bumpy for a bike ride, but yeah, it's, it's the very uh, nice pedestrian area. Uh, the Belgian pavés, yes, the the rough cobblestones, but uh, this uh, this portion of it's actually pretty decent. Yeah, I didn't really mind it. And um, so so you've got uh, an episode of the podcast coming up where you guys are talking about the space between the uh, the road way and the 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 building. That's kind of what you're looking at right here. Yeah, the curb and the building. Yeah. Although a lot of these places, there's kind of no curb because the pedestrian realm extends across the whole street. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So this is a, definitely a great example of a lot of enclosure, not a whole lot of uh, gaps between buildings. Except yeah. Streets. And we're, we're talking some really nice, high-quality bollards here. Take a look at these metal guys, these bad boys. Bollard world would be proud. And again, here's this bus. I love it. I mean, just I'm actually surprised at how large the bus was, but I, I guess yeah. it exempli exemplifies the point that it can get through. It's not yeah. that hard. Now, on that episode, uh, did have you guys released that episode yet? It, it's about to be released. <laughs> okay, so yeah. it's about to be released. So that's one. one yeah, we so recorded a while ago and took a little break. Yeah, fantastic. Good timing. Uh, so, uh, you know, be sure to share that uh, link with me and I'll include that in the link down below for, for those of you uh, viewing this. And if you haven't already subscribed to the uh, we built it that way podcast. Please do so. It's it's really fun. Uh, AJ and and Jordan do a great job, and and always make sure there's a little bit of humor in there, which is one of the reasons why it, it takes a little bit more time to to produce. I would think. I mean, I'm cranking mine out because they're yeah, mostly just straightforward <laughs> interviews. So, yeah, yeah. It takes a little a little while sometimes. Yeah, yeah for sure. So this next section that we discovered, uh, you know, was much more. Uh, traditional sort of pedestrian realm, active mobility realm. Uh, I don't believe any motor vehicles are actually allowed through this section of it. I know you took off and rode down uh, in that direction to sort of scope it out a little bit. And I was kind of hanging back, taking some uh, shots down in this area. Uh, talk a little bit about that experience of, of this section. Yeah, I think you could tell it was pretty recently redone. I would like to see what it looked like uh before but i mean people are just hanging out 
all the way all the way down there they've got those kind of tree planters periodically place yeah, this little curb extension that we see here you see the bollards and were in place but uh you know for this cafe right here they wanted a little bit more space so they went ahead and bulbed this out a little bit and why not a little tactical urbanism they seemed like this whole corridor was making use of a lot of like quick temporary materials they were yeah. doing a little restaurant a little um I think they said like a little prairie, pocket prairie thing going on in these like uh, enclosures here. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And I was just impressed by the number of people riding through here. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty uh, well-traveled bicycle route. Yeah. You've got a couple more behind you. Yeah, so I noticed that it, it, it definitely was a pretty well-traveled area through here, uh, it, it, bikes and pads. I, I guess we just just saw a car uh, heading down that way, so it, it must yeah. be another one of those uh, filtered permeability things, maybe for deliveries. Yeah, probably you're not going to take that route if you're trying to get somewhere, but because yeah. it just seems like too much of a pain yeah. uh, probably to drive down reliably, but yeah, easy enough for deliveries, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I think I'm about ready to to, to uh, talk a little bit about this little uh, uh, this little public space area here, and uh, before I hit play again, I, I, I was just wondering about this because it felt like to me that this was reclaimed space. This felt like to me it used to be a big, massive intersection. I think so. That's what that's the impression I got from the whole thing, and. And also the impression was that maybe this is a little bit of a work in progress and they're mm -hmm. figuring out what the configuration needs to be and wants to be. And I thought it was kind of cool to be there during, you know, during the middle of the process. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and hit play on this again. But yeah, it, it was neat to, you know, turn the corner and come to this and see all this greenery. So we just found this little uh, plaza area here and it looks to be a little garden, a little greening of the area. And you can see the sign. Fantastic. Bring a little bit of greenery into the city center. And immediately after that, we're you know, sort of on our way to get to our meeting. Uh, we're, we're on our way to meet up with Jill Warren, the CEO of the European Cyclist Federation. And so uh, we have a destination. We have some place we have to get to by a certain period of time. And so uh, we start mapping our way and jump out onto this uh, little street. Uh, talk a little bit about what your impressions were uh, you know, at this point, as we, you know, left that little plaza area, and this is the extension of that same street. So it, it was just a, a few uh, hundred meters down, and then boom, we were in this and, and traveling down. Yeah, this is the place where you start to see that, you know, get the picture that maybe they're just a little bit in their infancy as far as um, the relationship to making room for bikes. Um probably as much space as we got on a lot of these streets here is what we have here. Um, rarely, rarely super comfortable to have two people side by side, you know, cycling. Um, but it will, it'll narrow a little bit from here. Um, at least the traffic was, you know, fairly calm, but, uh, we'll see some, some places coming up that were even a little bit more pinched than this, but I don't know what, what stood out to you? We got, I guess, we got the red showing up here now. <laughs> briefly. Yeah, yeah. So we have this red in the in the conflict area. You see the feet strut sign here, and you see that there's construction to the the left. And that so, kind of helped make it slow down a little bit. <laughs> like. Yeah, I, I got the sense that maybe this feet strut um, application in this area was because of the construction, uh, because yeah, of so. the constraining, and so uh, that that was my take on it, and. And as we play for this forward a little bit, we'll get to some of the other infrastructure, some true cycling infrastructure, and then also a, uh, a more traditional feet strut application. 
so as soon as we got past the construction, we once again were on this type of treatment, and yeah. predictably we see the deliveries. You know, sort this of. This is a common sight. Yeah. yeah, this is the common sight. Yeah, that that we saw there, but uh, now we get into. We're like, whoa, look at this. We turn the corner and we're on an actual two-way cycle path uh, with some serious bollards. Look at this. <laughs> Downtown Everywhere. Brussels, Belgium, riding on a two-way cycle track. We've got some nice protection here with some serious bollards. And we are seeing a few people out riding. In general, this is a pretty nice. And this path. is a parking protected two way cycle track. Yeah, and uh, I'll pause it just for a second here to reflect a, a little bit on this because this is pretty high quality. This is pretty impressive. And as you had mentioned, um, you sort of anticipated seeing some ballers. I didn't really, but you know, so refreshing to see true authentic bollards being used there's a lot of people who uh, don't like the use of bollards in the middle of cycle paths and cycle tracks but unfortunately because of uh, multiple occurrences of fatalities of motor vehicles uh, you know driving right down the middle of uh, cycle paths uh, this is what we have to do in many places in North America uh, the most famous and infamous of it was of course uh, uh, when somebody drove down, one of the two-way cycle paths uh, in New York City, killing a bunch of people. So, yeah. um, but what what I like about this type of application is, I didn't see a single flex post anywhere. I mean, there's no flexing to this. This these are real, and it keeps the cars out. And at the same time, yeah, if you're riding a bike or a scooter, you're going to have to be aware because it ain't yeah. going to flex. No, you said pretty much everything that I that I um, was thinking about here. Like, it really stood out after spending a few days in the Netherlands, where, because this is maybe one of the one of the areas that seemed the most um, familiar, uh, like to the infrastructure in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. um, but the bollards, like, really stood out to me. It didn't seem like we saw this very much up in the Netherlands at all. Um, and, and maybe, and you can see it's not just in the middle of the, the cycle path, uh, but yeah. extending off to the right, anytime that there's, uh, driveways of any kind. It yeah, struck this me is that literally, maybe, this is literally a, 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 a tire, a tire place, a Dunlop, uh, tire and Goodyear tire right. place. And so uh, there's a reason for the bollards there. They do not want those cars continuing down no. through the pedestrian nor the, the cycle space. Yeah. Yeah. It strikes yeah. me that maybe this is like a, a particular thing that's especially important when you're still a bit more car dominant. Yeah. Um, and when you have the higher risk of people driving down these things and maybe when you're further down the road of like more towards Netherlands level of, of cycling infrastructure, maybe the, the bollards are less of a crucial piece. But yeah, yeah. you definitely have to <laughs> keep your uh, keep your head up when you're cycling. Yeah. And and I think it's it's worth saying that you know there there isn't that belief that oh we have to be we have to worry about the drivers and we don't want to have damage to their cars. It's like if you don't want damage to your car don't hit the baller. You know there's no flex post happening here. I mean you if you hit it you're going to damage your car. That's the whole point. Don't do it. Right. Yeah, better to better to tear up your fender or whatever then you yeah. know put somebody yeah. in the hospital so again we turned the corner we turned right and we ended up once again on a true feet strut and so uh this is something that was very interesting about uh the 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 brussels uh you know adoption of the feet strut and apparently mm -hmm. um the belgium government has actually uh, made the feet strut, uh, an official type of street, uh, an official type of infrastructure, which is actually, as we learned from uh, uh, from Mark with Bicycle Dutch, that's not the case in the Netherlands. A feet strut is not an official codified type of street in the, in the Netherlands or type of infrastructure. So it was kind of cool yeah. to see this this little thing happening. We just saw, you know, some skateboarders go by, and I don't know. What, what did you feel about these uh, little feet struts? 
honestly this was this i think it worked pretty well um on this street there wasn't very much traffic yeah we saw skateboarders buses it was really the issue is when you have um you know the deliveries stopped in the middle but yeah i think it worked okay yeah so uh, i'll uh, rewind board. just a little bit here because i start talking a little bit about this uh this particular application here and um it it, it was a very very interesting environment I don't think I've ever seen a checkerboard pattern um, on a street before. Have you ever seen this before? No, this might be particular to to Belgium or to Brussels. I think it was showing up um, in places where, like, it was like a transit lane intersecting yeah. with something else. It seems like a transit, sort of a conflict zone type of a situation. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's put, hit play on here, and I do have some narration to this because I I was fascinated by it. We we pulled off and stopped, and I started uh, shooting some uh, some footage here. So let's take a look at uh, what I'm what my ramblings were. But really, we're here to take a look at this cool thing. Look at this checkerboard. That's pretty awesome. Never seen the checkerboard treatment for this mixing area. Jordan says it matches the, uh, the chairs here at the restaurant, the cafe. Very cool. So the other interesting thing about this, uh, this little intersection here with this checkerboard treatment is if you take a look just after these vans pass, you can see the bulb out that they uh, they got installed over here. I thought that was pretty extraordinary that that little bulb out right there. And, I thought so uh, too, and that that wasn't the only time we saw that. It seemed like maybe that's been a point of emphasis lately. Is yeah. like understanding where these um, you know potentially dangerous zones are, and yeah, you just using simple treatment to to uh, to shelter people on foot. Yeah. And you can see it, this angle right here, you can see the, the fact that it used to just be a straight shot through here. So they clearly yeah. gave this uh, intersection a really nice road diet. <laughs> yeah. so I thought it was, it was quite, uh, quite fun to, to see it. I mean, bo both the, the dynamic of the, the checkerboard pattern, the use of these bollards, and then really narrowing up this space. And I think I do talk about it. Nice bulb out pedestrian realm through here you can see that this is probably a nice wide mess at some point in time so it's nice to see it all traffic calm down it makes it a lot more comfortable for people on bikes and right on cue she rode right through so I the like there's a lot of North American cities that have these um, sort of weird intersections with a diagonal street or whatever, yeah. And they could really benefit from this kind of uh, narrowing down, right? Not everything has to be a perfectly straight shot through. Like it really can be insanely dangerous to cross when when you have these streets that aren't just at running at right angles. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about this building. You uh, got so curious, you went and explored it. I went inside. There was like a gallery and hangout going on and a bar in there. I don't know what this used to be, but they repurposed it into like a like a gathering space. Mm -hmm. um, that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was taking a, a, a snapshot here of just, uh, you know, this nice narrow street. You can see the uh, the older uh, cobbles that are still underneath there. And, uh, yeah. uh, you know, this is just a nice low traffic street. Uh, and again, look at all of the bollards there. Very, very interesting. It's a shame, you know, it's a shame you can't fit two full-size fire trucks down there where they can yeah. high five each other going past each other. Yeah. This is in fact, it's, it's uh, when you get so curious, disaster. you're heading. Yeah, I know. It's a safety. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> How dare they? <laughs> yeah. Oh man. So, uh, yeah, I mean, what a delightful little corner and, and, uh, I just kind of hung out there. And then, uh, after that we decided to hit the road again and, uh, continue on to our meeting. And, um, we have a series of shots here of, yeah. uh, 
the, the different application. And uh, I'll, I'll shut up and let you, uh, you know, talk a little bit about your experience because you ended up behind me and, and uh, trying to catch up. Yeah, I mean, the, both both of us are pretty comfortable and confident cyclists, but like, I mean, I think you can kind of see being squeezed in between auto traffic like this. I think there's a photo coming up of me going. There. I mean, this really smacks of, you know, there, it's early goings maybe and getting people, you know, this making space for bikes, but this sort of smacks of like, well, we got to make a little room for the cyclists, so we'll give them a little something. And yeah. maybe not totally thinking through like uh, who who that's going to leave out, who's not going to feel comfortable being in that position. Yeah, um, I don't know. What did you? Wh- how were you feeling when you were going through there? Oh, I yeah, just like you. I mean, I I felt like it was you know very much uh, similar to what yeah. we see in North America. I mean, uh, take take a look at what this is. I mean, this is actually kind of brave in in the sense of what they're doing. This would actually drive, uh, you know, quite a few North American traffic engineers crazy. I mean, this is a contraflow, uh, you know, painted bike lane, you know, on a pretty wide stretch of road. So, yeah, it' pretty bold. I mean, I, I, I don't know many cities that would do this, you know, in this scale. I mean, we got plenty of contraflow lanes here in Austin, but they're not of this wide scale. Yeah, in some ways, maybe it's even a little bit uh you know less intimidating because you could see the oncoming traffic and it's not driver's side doors yeah but yeah yeah i mean the one thing to point out is like even though (laughs) it is like you can see again mixing right in the in between lanes of traffic yeah at least we're not dealing with the kind of like enormous strode um designs like where cars are going 50 miles an hour or more and you're still relegated to the same, you know, the same space and placement between the cars. Like, even though we were in between cars and it felt dicey at sometimes, the speeds are a lot lower. Yeah, you yeah. know, than we see yeah. in the U.S. And like you said, you, it definitely had the feel as if we were transitioning. And in fact, uh, very yeah. soon we ended up on this wonderful facility, which is literally right in front of uh, the building where we were going to be oh, meeting yeah, up with nice. Jill. And so this was a, a, a wonderful wide facility. Uh, there are, uh, you can see that there's some cars parked ahead there. So motor vehicles are allowed in this space, but it's very much uh, analogous to, you know, a, a more comfortable mixed, uh, f- you know, mixed uh, facility where, you know, there's multiple uh, different types of uh, vehicles in the space. Very and this is like the ring around downtown, right? Like the really busy, wide ring road, ring street around downtown. That sounds familiar. Yeah, I, I would say that you're correct on that. And we saw a turn bike shop. So that was kind of cool. Took that photo. And then we went in and this is a little shop where uh, we got some coffee, some more coffee and uh, and uh, met up with Jill. And then after that, we went out and walked to a, a absolutely delightful lunch and this is us on on our walk so we're we're making our way uh, down through this space and it was neat to see this uh sort of environment here really kind of a curbless uh type of uh, situation again it integrates into the the uh, uh sidewalk area there and then i see this motorcycle zip through and i'm like well, what are you doing what are you doing and then yeah. i realized oh i guess it is kind of a mixed space so yeah it felt a little hectic, a little chaotic in yeah. maybe not the sense you necessarily want, like because the speeds did feel a little faster than you ideally want in a shared space. Yeah. yeah. Which I think I remember Jill pointing out as well. Yeah. And, and this was a pretty steep hill here that we were kind of descending down. And uh, and then that motorcycle, you know, was kind of carving his turn in front of us and, and cutting through this space. Uh, and it seems like, uh, if I remember correctly, I think she had mentioned that they're trying to discourage uh, two-way traffic and, and, and motor vehicle use in this area, but apparently yeah. it is a pretty critical uh, transit route, and so they have to kind of oh, maintain right. that. But, right. but it is a curbless environment, so it is kind of this amorphous sort of shared space that, that exists here. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe this was our good indication that 
uh, just simply making a space shared doesn't go far enough to making it fully comfortable for the most vulnerable users. Like yeah. you, you know, you might have to play with, um, you know, putting bends in so that's not a straight shot. And, um, but yeah, like if you're, if you're trying to accommodate articulated buses and whatnot, yeah. I don't know, that's, that's can be tricky. Yeah. This was fun. And I, I threw this photo in here just because I thought it was a fun story that, uh, uh apparently, you know, this, this was a situation where the building, uh, that, uh, had been torn down and then, uh, was going to be redeveloped, but then all of a sudden the building next to it started falling down. And so they had to quickly, <laughs> uh, you know, do something to hold up the other building. And uh, apparently it's all wrapped yeah, up good in a thing lawsuit. They had those right lying now. around. I know. I, I, good thing that it was there. And here's Jill. Uh, again, shout out to Jill uh, Warren with the uh, European Cyclist Federation, CEO of the European Cyclist Federation. It was such a delight to be able to meet with her and uh, just kind of touch base on uh, what ECF is really working on. And uh, we talked a little bit about the upcoming uh, Velo City Conference uh, that is, is coming up here in May. And uh, I don't know, what are some of your thoughts uh, on that visit to Brussels and, you know, kind of, you know, in the aftermath of a few days in the Netherlands, a couple weeks in the Netherlands, and then uh, being able to, to experience that. And now, uh, a couple months later, to, you know, be able to reflect a little bit about that. What are some of the thoughts that uh, really percolate up for you? Yeah, it was nice to be in another European country, you know, maybe more typically car oriented than a place like the Netherlands. Um, and you can see how they have a lot of things going for them in terms of the space constraints, maybe slow down traffic a little bit. Um, but that, you know, it's a real commitment to start reallocating space um, and really slowing down to the speed that's comfortable to people on foot and, and biking. Um, so I don't know, it's nice to see a little bit of that variety and remind ourselves that, you know, it's a work in progress everywhere and, you know, not, not to get discouraged on this side of the, the Atlantic that, um, you know, every, everybody's in progress. I shouldn't say everybody's in progress, but like, yeah, like it's, it's a, pro it's a process that takes time and, and, um, Netherlands didn't get there overnight and a place like. Um, Brussels and the rest of Belgium is, is it, you know, is working on it and getting there and, you know, so can we. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What, well, what I, thoughts I, did you have? I didn't I, know what to expect, it, but it was nice to see it. Yeah, no, the same thing. I, I had only heard that um, you know Belgium in general wasn't as bike friendly as uh, as the Netherlands, but they were uh, doubling down and doing a lot of hard work. And I I felt like that was was evident, is that they have yeah. a long way to go, but they have all also done uh, some wonderful things in terms of placemaking and pedestrianizing and. Uh, wonderful use of, you know, using bollards strategically. Hopefully at some point in, in the future, uh, the bollards won't be needed because there won't be yeah. that level of threat from the boat or vehicles. But uh, yeah, no, I'm super glad that we were able to squeeze that trip in. The next day was a Delft and, uh, and The Hague. Uh, again, we're, we're going to make our way out to The Hague on this uh, the next day, the November 3rd. And, uh, and, and we have a special little surprise on that because we're actually riding out to The Hague for a bicycle light parade. And uh, it was all good fun. So that's our next video is coming up soon. Jordan, hey, thank you so much for uh, joining me on another reaction video. Uh, we wrap this up. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me back, John. It was fun. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much. Mm -hmm.